Maybe you already know the story that I'm going to share with you today about Robert Schumann, the really famous composer, husband of Clara Schumann, who actually wanted to be a concert pianist for a lot of his life. But something happened along the way and he was not able to pursue a career as a concert pianist and instead he turned to composing. Now today I'm going to share this story with you about Robert Schumann and then I'm going to use this story to cover one big lesson that we can all learn from Schumann's mistakes. Now, as I said, Schumann wanted to be a concert pianist. He practiced tirelessly and relentlessly. And sources say that he was really intense about his piano practice. There's been seasons of my life where I've been practicing eight hours a day, but he would practice 12 hours a day. He would not sleep, he would not eat. He was very, very committed to being a concert pianist. Fast forward to his adult years, and he actually suffered from paralysis of one of his fingers. And he ended up with paralysis because of his desire to play with more flexibility and more finger independence. And I say finger independence with a little bit of pause and reverence because finger independence is something that I see thrown around all the time nowadays in this day and age. People always are asking me for exercises to improve their finger independence. I see it in online forums. It's a really hot topic and a goal that a lot of piano players are after. Now, Schumann also wanted finger independence, and the story goes that he invented this device that would actually stretch his fingers. And the way that it worked is it would keep one finger up, suspended in the air, so that the other fingers could move around and practice. And I can't even with this device because it seems so painful and so torturous. Now in using this device, he permanently injured his hand. And maybe you could see from the beginning that that's where that story was going, but this is a big deal. And I want to talk about it a little bit because I think that we can all learn from Schumann in a very big way. Because I believe that where Schumann went wrong was his desire to force or quickly develop more finger independence. Let me explain. Now, from everything that I can understand in the online communities and the online forums, and when people are asking me for content about how to increase their finger independence, they're searching for answers on how to like have each hand do what it's supposed to do at the right time. So like be able to coordinate the hands independently, but also at the same time doing the correct thing, have each finger be where it needs to be in the appropriate time or simply be able to move each finger with ease, especially the fingers that are a little bit more challenging to move independently, like the fourth finger and the fifth finger. Now you'll have to comment on this video and let me know if you've seen people referring to finger independence with a different meaning than what I just explained. Now I wanna share the big lesson with you that I've been promising. And the big lesson is that you can't actually force or speed up the attaining of finger independence because all three of those things that I just described that people are looking for when they're looking for finger independence are not things that you can wave a magic wand and have. There's not one single exercise that is going to increase your ability to play your fourth and fifth finger independently with more freedom. There's not a fast track that's going to allow your hands to coordinate independent of each other and also with each other at the same time. And finger independence is never going to come from stretching your fingers or working out each finger individually. It doesn't matter how much you practice Hannon or how many technical exercises you practice. It's not going to speed up the process because finger independence doesn't actually come from the independence of your fingers. Let me explain. Finger independence comes from practicing with musicality as your end goal. It starts with proper technique, knowing exactly how to utilize your body and your arms and your fingers to get the sound that you want out of the piano. It comes from giving clear directions to your hands about where they need to be on the keys and at what time they need to be there. Kind of like choreographing 10 dancers on a stage. Finger independence comes from practicing correctly focusing on accuracy and being consistent. So do not waste your time chasing after a quick fix for finger independence. There's not really a fast track. Above all, make sure that you have proper technique because if you are not utilizing your body in the correct way, not only will you not achieve any flexibility and freedom in your fingers, you're also likely to injure yourself if you try. If you're not sure if your technique is on par, check out this live stream that I did on the topic where I show you exactly how to set yourself up with proper technique so that you can build from that solid foundation. And you can check that video out right here.